And Alan Thomas says he walked into a townhouse he rents in Greenville after it had been ransacked. The intruders were still there. Deborah and Debbie, you talk about your scary moments. This was one. Thomas stood at that door with his shotgun for 10 terrifying minutes, not knowing what the men on the other side of it were capable of. He says those men followed him. He locked the door, grabbed his shotgun, called 911, and then started a Facebook Live. I've never been in a situation where I had a gun thinking I would have to use it to kill another person. So, Alan, a few months ago there was a story in the news about a burglary situation that occurred at your home, and it got, you know, a fair amount of media attention. Uh, but I think there... It's probably more to the story, and I'm not so sure that the media really was able to drill down and get all of the details and specifics of what took place. Tell us a little bit more about that incident. It was an ordinary day. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, campaigning all day and decided to go to uh, my second home. Mm -hmm. I have a secondary residence in Greenville, North mm -hmm. Carolina, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a townhome. And uh, the way the townhome is set up, is, it is three floors, um, and there's a tenant per floor. Mm -hmm. So there was currently a tenant living on the first floor. Uh, my space, living space, was on the second floor, uh, and the third floor of the townhome was empty. So I walk into the front door of my townhome, and I immediately saw people standing in the kitchen that, that I'd never seen before. Uh, and of course, because I have uh, a first floor tenant living there, uh, I, I automatically assumed that they were his guests, just some people that I've never seen. Uh, so uh, I went into the kitchen right there where they were and I, I got something to drink out of the refrigerator and I spoke to them, say, hey, how y'all doing? And they spoke back. Uh, some of them looked very nervous. Uh, and around that time, I heard someone upstairs running. And I knew that was odd immediately because no one should be up on the second or third level uh, because that's where I live. So I went upstairs and when I opened my door to my bedroom, uh, I saw the drawers, uh, dresser drawers pulled out and clothes were um, scattered throughout my room. So I knew someone had been in my room, um, you know, looking for things and possibly stealing things. So I quickly closed my door to my bedroom and locked it because there's only one way in and one way out of the town home. So um, I would have had to go right back past those individuals in order to get out of the residence. So um, I locked the door and I, I called 911. Uh, I told them um, that my, my place had been uh, burglarized and told them I needed assistance. Um, so while I waited, it seemed like a very prolonged wait, I, I actually um, I heard some of the individuals come to my door and begin rattling the doorknob, trying to get back in. And uh, you know, that, that's when I, I was really alarmed um, and I retrieved my shotgun that I had hidden in my, in my room. Um, and I took my cell phone and began recording mm -hmm. because I wanted to make sure that if I had to, to shoot, that it was uh, very clear that I had no choice. Mm -hmm. uh, so I set my phone up and I, I began to record. Uh, and in the recording, you could hear the people speaking to the, through the door, you know, let me in, I need to get some stuff that I, I left in there, you know. Um, and, and of course, I wasn't going to do that. You know, I, I saw that they had left a stun gun behind, you know, and I don't know, I assume that it was for me, you know, to be used on me. And I was afraid that they may have other weapons on them, you know. So I had my shotgun; it was loaded, you know, and I was prepared to shoot. I gave them several, several warnings um, to leave, and they still stuck around. If you open that door, it's gonna be some problems, man. It's gonna be some problems if you open this door, bro. I promise you. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Hey, bro, if you open this door, I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. Tell me, bro. Hey, you, you open this door. I'm telling you. Um, you know, you they would go downstairs door, and come back up, and it would be two of them now at the door, you know, um, trying to wiggle the doorknob. You know, so it, there were times where I had the, the gun pointed at the door. You know,
know, um, and, and had they broken through the door, that would have been my cue, uh, where I felt like I had no other choice. Uh, but thankfully, I didn't have to do that. Um, and they left uh, right before the police came. Uh, the police did a search uh, of the property just to make sure that they weren't in there hiding. Uh, and then when the coast, the coast was clear, they interviewed me and I, I told them all about my roommate and, and, and they, they did a report. Uh, not even a day later, uh, I, I went home to my, my home in Rayford uh, and returned back a day or two later uh, to the residence and found out that they had broken in a second time. And uh, they had stolen my TV and uh, stolen the, the shotgun that I used in the video to protect myself. Uh, so I, I was very disturbed by that and I immediately moved out, of course, like, like any reasonable person would. Uh, the police began investigating uh, and it was a short time later they found some individuals breaking into cars uh, and they, they executed a search warrant at their home and they found my shotgun uh, in that individual's home and they admitted, admitted to breaking into my, into my apartment. You know, so um, it's a very scary situation from, for anyone who's in public office. You know, anyone who's out on the road a lot campaigning and, and working, trying to make, you know, the state a better place. You know, we can be easy targets. You know, I'm thankful that I didn't have to use force. You know, I used uh, restraint uh, because the officers made it clear that had I shot through the door, uh, his opinion is that I would have been justified. You know, so, um, you know, I feel like those individuals uh, deserved a second, second chance. You know, they made a bad decision. You know, and it's my prayer that now moving forward that they'll be able to have a second chance and be able to contribute to society. Uh, so I just wanted to explain, you know, more in more detail because the news left a lot out. <laughs> you, know, they, you know, they left a lot, lot out. They did a great job reporting it, but, but um, I wanted to make sure that, that, that all the details were out there because this is a very scary situation. A very scary situation. So um, I'm just very thankful um, that it ended the way it did uh, and that everyone's safe.